think it is. Is that what it is? Okay. Well, let me tell you what you just did. Okay. That was not it. Okay. But what you did do, it's a, it's a up and down. Okay. And then you should start trying to learn how to yodel from a cowboy sweetheart. It's this song. It's like I wanna be a cowboy sweetheart. I wanna learn to rope and ride. Oh, yeah. And it's gonna. It even, it's like Tarzan. Tarzan, friend. Right, cause doesn't he go? Oh, yo, yo. That's what Tarzan do. Yeah. I just know the black the Tarzan jungle. on Instagram. <laughs> the one with the with the animals. Yeah, he don't be doing that. You know what I'm talking about? From her alter ego Puddin to her successful R and B career, K Michelle has never been one to shy away from the spotlight. Even when her polarizing "What you see is what you get" personality may have been a little intimidating to some. Now, she's stepping into the shade room and getting real about everything. From going country to reality television, relationships, unrealistic beauty standards, and her struggles as an artist under pressure in the entertainment industry. What's up, roommates? It's your girl, Tembi, and today we've got a superstar stepping into the shade room, Miss K. Michelle. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, girl. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm blessed. Yeah, less uh -huh. than highly favored. Yes. <laughs> yes Amen to that. Yes. Okay, so I want to get right into it because who is Puddin? Oh, you hit it. Um, that's how I grew up. That's what my parents, family, everybody called me Puddin. Okay, so is that like your country name? or That's my life name. Okay. And um, when I like started, said I was just going to go into what it is I love, like country, mm -hmm. um, I was like, I should just go with the name of Mem in Memphis, Tennessee, what they call me. So we all know you want to get into the country space and are already uh -huh. in, you know, you've got your foot in the door yeah. now. Um, so what have you, you know, have you, do you feel like you found some, some success in that area right now? Um, I feel like it's like what you call success. Like today they just announced, like Rolling Stone, and they announced today the first country the first tape I ever got my whole life was the Judds. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're a mother and daughter country group and um, Naomi Judd just passed. Right. And I will only sing, Love Can Build a Bridge. Mm. And what are the chances that years, like over 10 years later, that she would pass and her original producers and everyone would call me wow. and I would be today on an album dedicating her the very song that I grew up on love build a bridge love can build a bridge with jelly roll um Dolly Parton Reba McIntyre uh Gwen Stefani they're all on the song they're all on this album but me and jelly roll on the same album together mm -hmm. tributing the judge my favorite wow How does that's that my make favorite you group I was crying. I don't be getting emotional, but today it was like really unreal because they keep telling you like you can't sing that because you black. Like that's I only did R and B because y'all kept telling me I couldn't do that because of how I looked to act. Mm -hmm. And um, to see a full circle, right? That's crazy to me to see that you're on an album with like Dolly Parton and and everybody that Thank you. Me. Well, congratulations! Thank cheers you. to that. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers Thank to you. That. That's amazing. Thank That's you. amazing. So, you know, you did the CMA Fest. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what was your experience performing there versus performing in like other spaces you've performed in the in the past? You know what's so crazy, and people probably get mad at me, but we said we was gonna be very honest. Mm -hmm. Um, the CMA Fest is, you know, that was something again. I was told I couldn't do because of me just me you know what i'm saying so cma fest for any country artist is huge right. your first it doesn't matter if you play to three or if you play to thousands you got to pay your dues in country music mm -hmm. so to get invited to do the cma fest and to have people out there to be able to tribute tina turner and do all of that it was just amazing for me um it's really crazy because it feels like um when i do the things in my, you know, genre that I'm known for, I really be feeling like I have to fight my people mm. um, to sing my music. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's crazy that it goes from you singing R&B and then people have a perception of you and mm -hmm. you fighting your own people. I said no more. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not fighting my people to sing what I'm going to do. Right. If I'm going to fight, it's going to be for something that's going to make a little girl or a boy mm -hmm. look and say, damn, like, she did, she made history. Right. If I'm going to fight, it's going to be for history. It's not going to be for clout. Mm. Period. That, that's the word. Yeah. That's the word right there. So, I mean, speaking of R&B, you have your album now. Uh-huh. Um, I'm the problem. Yeah. Now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see your face. I saw your face. Well, because you said it was, wasn't this supposed to come out some time ago? <laughs> Girl, they told me it was four years ago. Oh, my God. We had God. four years. I f hate putting out music. <laughs> Why? Because folk is evil, man. It never be about the music. It's never about the music. So I feel like every time I put out music, it puts me in the forefront to mm. have to be seen. Mm. But when I ain't putting out no music and I'm just mm. doing business, I ain't got to be seen and I don't have to live in nobody's judgment. Right, right. Okay, I can understand that. But you're so good at it, at your music. So, like, you have to put more out. Like, we be waiting. I get it. Like, I, I, I don't like it. I had to look at that the other day. Like, I, it's not that you don't like music, hey. You don't like the mm -hmm. industry. You don't yeah. do well with it. You do great in a studio. Mm -hmm. You do great on stage, but you don't do great in no other part. Of it. After this, I own my rights. Um, All of my country rights. They trying to give me a country music deal right now. Yes. Labels. No. No? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> okay. I've never owned anything. Wow. Like, I've never got no money from none of my gear. Wow. Uh-uh. Yeah. So, as a musician, how do you make money in the music space? Um, touring. That's okay. why I've I've literally been on the road every weekend for over eight years. Wow. Dad, and like endorsements, I'd like to say, you know, I'm the first black ever endorsed by Jack Daniels. Curious, say it again. Yes. <laughs> I made more money and learned more business yeah. from Jack Daniels than I made with any music. Wow. Okay, and you uh, were going to go to law school, right? Yeah, I got to law school. Oh, my God. So what kind of lawyer did you want to be? I wanted to be an entertainment lawyer. Then I wanted to do, like, real estate. But I knew that I just wanted to, like, get people. <laughs> what you mean? Girl. <laughs> I wanted to, like, <laughs> debate them down. I was yes. really good at it. And I went to Florida A&M University. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated, I, I got to three law schools, and I told my mama, I'm going to be a singer. She was like, if you don't take your ass, <laughs> we can pay all this money right. to go be a lawyer. I said, no, not. So what? at what point did you, like, <laughs> make that switch, you know, going through all that school, going to law school, being accepted to law school, and being yeah. like, eh, Actually, I quit college every day. Um, <laughs> that I was always threatened by my parents. Like I was like, I'm going to Broadway. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, you're going to Broadway without your car and without no money. Mm -hmm. And then I had my son in college, mm -hmm. and um, people so thought my life finish. was over. Yeah. But I had my child, and I knew I had to do something. So mm -hmm. I graduated, got to law school, took a corporate job in Memphis. Wow. What was the job? At FedEx. Really? If you guys education in Memphis, that's the only place you can work at FedEx. What were you doing? Girl, try to ship out some boxes. <laughs> try to sell people boxes. <laughs> try to sell boxes. You were selling boxes? Girl, you should have heard me, girl. <laughs> try to sell these boxes. This is a great job. <laughs> like, oh my God, you're going to be a number one fucking box seller. I'm done. <laughs> so it wasn't for you? No. <laughs> and then Mace, I was on MySpace working uh -huh. on their time at FedEx. I'm done. And I remember MySpace changed my whole life. How so? Because, you know, you had your top friends on MySpace. Mm -hmm. So some random dude from Memphis had me up there. I guess I was like booty candy. I ain't got no ass now, but <laughs> I was booty candy. Mm -hmm. And that he hit Mace. And said, um, how can I be signing your record label, Mace? He was like, you can't be signed, but that girl in your top five can. Oh, wow. Is that how it, the whole music? No way. I swear that's how it happened. From MySpace being a random person's top five? Mm-hmm. 
Wow. And then I, it wasn't two days later, I quit my job at FedEx. And my parents said, we'll help you with your child. And I moved to Atlanta, and it was a wrap. But so, on the MySpace, like, did you have, like, music there? Or did I you had just thought music. You were cute? Okay. I had music I had done. I had just put it up. And then... He was like, Mace want to talk to you. And, you know, Mace don't sound like, like Mace, Mace. Like Mace, Mace. Bad boy Mace. That slow talking motherfucker. <laughs> I know I, I picked up. He was like, I was like, yeah, that's definitely Mace. <laughs> like, this is not fake. <laughs> and then my lawyer um, talked to him, and I moved to Atlanta two days later. Wow. So you just packed up and left. I was out of fitting. <laughs> <laughs> you shipped yourself out. Quick. <laughs> You hear me? I got the on down. Oh, I didn't know what I was going to do. I got to Atlanta, though. That is hilarious. And uh -huh. But you'd gone to college for yodeling? Yeah, I got a scholarship for yodeling. Can you teach me how to yodel? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tell you the truth? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I've done so many interviews for years. I've never yodeled in my country album coming up. that will be like the first time. But, yeah, I got a scholarship for yodeling. Okay, can you rate my yodel? You going to do it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't. I don't want to disrespect okay, do the yodel. Let me hear. You serious? I'm gonna try. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay. Let me get serious. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how to do it. Come on, what you think it is? Yodel, yodel, yodel. Hold on. Oh no, wait. wait I'm gonna tell you something. You didn't do awful. And I'm gonna play. Okay. Okay. Let me do better. <clears throat> That's what I think it is. Is that what it is? Okay. Well, let me tell you what you just did. Okay. That was not it. Okay. But what you did do, it's a, it's a up and down. Okay. And then you should start trying to learn how to yodel from a cowboy sweetheart. It's this song. It's like I wanna be a cowboy sweetheart. I wanna learn to rope and ride. Oh. And it's gonna. It, you, it's like Tarzan. Tarzan, friend. Right, because doesn't he go, oh, yo, yo. That's what Tarzan do? Yeah. I just know the black the Tarzan jungle. on Instagram. <laughs> the one with the, with the animals? Yeah, he don't be doing that. You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly who you're talking about. I've never heard him call out. <laughs> you didn't know Tarzan, the, the jungle I could also say I've never seen Tarzan. No? No. I've okay. seen the black Tarzan on Instagram. I am done, and that's the only Tarzan you know. I knew he wore that little thing. <laughs> yeah. All but, right. Okay. But you didn't do bad. It's a, it's a up and down. Okay. So when I went to FAMU, they had never given out a scholarship. For yodeling? No. So how, they did they make that up like on the spot or something? I just said, I'm here to yodel. And they said, bet. And they said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I yodeled and I knew I was going to FAMU. I yodeled. I did a little Ave Maria, you know, who just got to do Ave Maria because <laughs> you got to show, you know, your different mm -hmm. So I did Ave Maria, I yodeled, and then they gave me a scholarship to family. Wow. You got such an interesting journey. Just a, a mess, child. <laughs> just a mess. Okay, so then um, let's get back to the album because I want to know more about it. Mm -hmm. I'm the problem. What does that mean? The, what did it say? So you feel like you're the problem for what? I feel like I'm going to be the problem regardless. Okay. In any situation? The industry going to label you. Mm. It doesn't matter. Like, I could try to change. I could be better. I could this and that. They're always going to go to this. They're going to go to your mistake. Like, no matter what I do, I'm a problem. Mm -hmm. Because I, I still stand for what I stand for. And I am how I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm a problem. It just is what it is. Bang. I'm out. Okay. But so you've been honest about like, um, you know, body positivity, mm -hmm. you know, things of a sort. And you've shared your journey. Yeah. Um, with like plastic surgery and, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. So why do you feel like that was like important for you to share? Like not only the journey to, but the journey away from. Because people always act like they life so good. Mm -hmm. Like you have people looking at you and they, they think everything is great. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so great. Oh, I'm so rich. Oh, I'm so thick. Mm -hmm. and no, you sick. 
<laughs> like it just uh like I never said if I was gonna show them my highs, I definitely was gonna show them my lows, and I never straight on that. If it happened, it happened for me. I'm just like y'all. So when it came to body stuff, I was sick as f no one. They told me I had lupus. I was walking around here thinking I had lupus. So you didn't have lupus? No. Wow. They told me I had lupus for two weeks. Did another panel. They said we don't know what's wrong with her. She don't have this. She don't have that. Then they did the body image, and they saw all black mm. in my hips and in my butt, and it was black on the MRI for all the the foreign substances oh. were. I was like, oh, yeah, this is crazy because I only did this because I was already, like, you know, juicy and just short. Mm -hmm. um, but I did it because I seen other people in the industry, and I thought that that was the way. So I was like, man, I can't let nobody go through this. I had 13 surgeries mm. in one year. Wow. Oh, You did all this. Y'all almost lost your life over that. Mm. So I said I was going to say something. Yeah, and so now there seems to be also, like, a trend. Maybe it's not a trend. Maybe people just realize yeah, things. Yeah, it's a trend. This like, is it's not holy. Yeah. And it's it, 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 the same. I call to go talk to these girls. Mm. When them checks start, then you start finding your sympathy. Mm -hmm. You ain't that. <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with y'all. You just didn't stop giving you the money. Mm. And then you had to figure out another way for sympathy mm -hmm. to help you. Yeah. I don't stand with nobody who didn't stand in it when you told me at your mouth. I don't want to be known for that. You don't want to be known for helping them girls that look at you? and look up to you, I can't respect it. I can't respect it. Right. But when the money get low, you gonna do whatever you gotta do. Mm -hmm. I ain't with it. Yeah. I ain't with it. Ain't no, you ain't found Jesus in two days. And I worked at FedEx. She didn't <laughs> ship it to you. <laughs> she didn't ship it to you. You feel me? Right. I know the truth. I know all of these truths. Mm. All of these truths. And that's part of the problem because I know all of the truths. Mm-hmm. But there's people, like, starting, like, to take, like, implants out these days, like, stop mm -hmm. doing fillers. And so, like, what do you think, like, that's well? Is it people, like, growing up? Is it, like, a where's shortage. the shift? Like, what do you mean? It's a shortage. I needed to elaborate. Well, when the penis is not taking care of the home, uh -huh. then the hot pocket has to figure out another way in order to support the Birkin habits okay. and then the other habits and then everybody want to find God and find health and find whatever. There are women, there are so many women and I literally talk to these women, mm -hmm. random women every day who are really, really dying. Mm -hmm. It's not a cool thing to play with. Like these women are dying. Mm. Like these women have died because they want their body. They want this and that. I've seen these women eyes. I watch these women. They are trying to live for their kids. They not. It's not no cloud. It's not none of that. So I take it real personal, and I take great offense when I'm seeing these women really is dying, and it ain't about no money. So I love to see women talking about what they went through and all of that, but all of that other fake for this industry, this fake, I'm not with none of it. Yeah. Do you, in your body now, like feel like comfortable and like secure and happy? No, not all the way. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there is a very, like I got a dent right here. Like I got a dent right here. I feel like, I feel like more, I be asking myself, are you healed or are you just, no. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, when a doctor tell when you do 13 surgeries in a year, mm -hmm. and you watch your mama look at you like, what the f*** did you do to yourself? Mm -hmm. You literally have to, you have to look at it. And I just like, I was so crazy. Like, I just remember every time y'all post, like anybody post, they be like, oh, you did your face. You think I laid there and let somebody chop on my face? Mm -hmm. Like, that's some crazy sh to me you know what I'm saying I'm not gonna look the same like I'm literally I used to I weighed 105 pounds mm. like I'm just picking up weight and just picking up confidence and mm -hmm. just picking up this and that and all of that and I'm honest enough to say they like you still need two more surgeries for reconstruction 
But I just can't see myself getting put back under like that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I have to deal with every day. Do you want to finish up your surgery? Are you going to be scared to go to sleep? People don't wake back up from that. Every day I deal with that. Mm. You know? Well, you know, you're a very beautiful woman. So when you you you. look in the mirror, like what do you feel is your best physical feature? My heart. Like I don't, I don't, I just know I can't go nowhere without people talking to me about their life. Mm -hmm. Or somebody confiding me. It's another thing that God got me here for. Mm -hmm. Um... So I think when I look in the mirror, I think I think I have beautiful skin. I think I, you know what I'm saying. I yeah. think um, I think uh, my legs are very smooth. Mm-hmm. I think I have dedicated some time to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I'm I'm learning, you know. Yeah. To like deal and yeah. like that confidence, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Yeah. You've been chopped on all this motherfucking time, like. You got to figure out what is it about you. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm doing. So were you, um, like, were you always confident and then, like, your confidence declined when you got in the industry? Absolutely. Or were you, okay. So it Absolutely. Was the I ain't know nothing. I had my teeth look like I was chewing rocks before I got in the music industry. I was very, you know, I was okay with them little bit ass teeth. Mm-hmm. And when I got in, I needed this. I needed titties. I worked at Hooters with no breasts mm-hmm. through college. I didn't know. I just know I didn't have no breasts. I knew yeah. my. I, I didn't know that certain things were needed and expected mm-hmm. into the industry. Then it got very. I gotta do this. Mm-hmm. Like I need to fix this. I got the money to do this. I need to fix that. Mm-hmm. And that was the worst shit ever, boy. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about relationships. <laughs> Are you currently in a relationship? Okay, I've been with a man like eight years. Oh. But guess what? What? I'm done with him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with him. Why? Guess how long it's been since I talked to him. How long? It's going to be two weeks on Sunday. Wow. Two weeks on Why Sunday. Why aren't you I should do a song like that. Two weeks on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Get get to writing. Um, yeah. Okay, so why haven't you talked to him? Are you giving him the silent treatment? No, I need to do, I need to go. I need to be done. Why? Because I, I, okay, so I think it's like a light switch with Dayton. Okay. He said something that was, made me feel so small. Mm. Like I can take a lot of sh- Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I be trying to ride and all this stuff and stuff, but I ain't gonna die, child. <laughs> like, you know, right. he said something that was so, and I think he even, I'm not, uh, if you say something and it snap and I just cry immediately, you know, you don't need that much power over me. You don't need none of that. What I'll, did he say? Can you share or no? Girl, it was bad. I think I'll keep that one. So for eight years, you dated him for eight years, and he said one thing that made you feel like. But oh. I feel like it tied in to everything. Wow. I feel like it was that one moment mm. that just happened, and I said, "What?" And it made me feel so small. Mm. So you don't have to go into detail, but was it like about you? Was it like did you feel like he was like attacking? It was you? very dismissive. Okay. It was very dismissive of who I am as a woman, and um what I was dealing with. Mm. It was very like and I never saw him I always saw him as like a good guy. Okay. And he, he said something the very same day. Mm-hmm. He said there's a difference in a good guy and a nice guy. Mm. And I was like, what the f-? like you look at this person as if they're like super whatever. Yeah. A nice guy is just, you know, kinda show you what you wanna see. A good guy is genuinely who they are. Right. A nice guy can adapt in this room but mm. a good person and a good guy you ain't got to worry about them when they walk out that room mm. okay and i thought i i mixed that up okay i mixed it wow. up wow eight years he said something and you just knew that stuff i've been know and we was together that long but i've been knowing him since high school wow yeah. okay has he been trying to get in contact with you every day every day sheesh i'm done okay so safe to say 
Because I was going to ask you, did you ever go through with the surrogacy? Well, we ended up, it was a doctor here, we ended up doing the, you know, the, the design a baby thing. And then they tell you, they can keep your kids from over 500 different diseases. And so we went through that. We do have, you know, I do have an embryo, that type of thing going on. But I'm not supposed to do that with him. I think I'm supposed to adopt like Josephine Baker. <laughs> All type babies. And just love them kids. Mm. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. But I'm just like dating. Right. He was that. Like, he was it. If that didn't work, it's to hell. Really? Because you said before that you feel like men aren't good people. So They're not still good think- people. Okay. They're not good people. They, 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 mom and them don't even raise them to be good people. Mm. You post like we raising our men to be, like it's crazy to hear the songs like my son, mm-hmm. my this and that. Like we are really saying that it's okay. We saying that yeah. nature and everything is gonna tell a man that he can do this and that. No fuck you and that nature, mm-hmm. cause my nature gonna fuck you up. So, I can't do it. The culture, Mm -hmm. the love language is not of me. What's your love language? My love language, oh my God. My love language is like a southern man with some tight jeans. Build me some Stop fucking talking and (laughs) Go and build me a chicken coop. What the (laughs) Like, I don't want no Birkin. Go build some Okay. So, you like acts of service. Yeah. Okay. All that other I can buy you this and that. That motherfucker got a budget for that. I don't care about that. That don't mean that. Go sit your ass down and shut up and build something. <laughs> Go build something. Right. For your family and for mm-hmm. your life. So, yeah, I'm I'm probably not doing it. Yeah. Ever again. Ever again? Girl, I'm not doing none of this. I'm literally going to get me a cowboy. Okay. You know what? Maybe that's... Have you dated outside of your race before? Oh, that's all I do. Oh, okay. That's what the problem is. <laughs> the problem is, I don't care who mad, who say what they say got a problem. Yeah. I stand for my black men. I'm going to be on the front line for you and mm-hmm. nobody need to mess with you. But when I say cowboy, a black man can be a cowboy too. Right. This is true. Um, Black men can be a cowboy too. I have honestly always really dated outside of my race okay. and that have always been a problem mm-hmm. that I have watched happen for me. Okay. Um what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned in love? It ain't no color, it ain't no gender, it ain't none of that. It's just what you feel and how you vibe and who who is for you and what you require. You feel what I'm saying? So you just feel like you're done dating. Oh, hell no. <laughs> what? I always got one for you. <laughs> I've had some of the best stories, okay. child. I've done a great job. <laughs> but right now, it's, it's going to be my love language. Okay. But and it took years. I'm years older than you. Mm-hmm. It took, it's, it's, it's this moment. It just took, I ain't even at two weeks mm-hmm. to be like, Oh wow, mm. that's that's pretty f-ed up. Mm. How someone feels about you. Okay, so okay, so let's play a little game. Um. So I want to hear because you you know you mentioned like you know some people will come to you for advice and you know yeah. things like that. So I want to know what advice you would give some people. Okay. Okay. So let's start with Summer Walker. Okay. Okay. Are you familiar with like her situation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, what advice would you give her? Man, Summer dope. Like, like honestly, like Summer is so dope. I feel like it takes growth and life, and I feel like her songs tell her life, and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, and I'm in the meet. I think he cool. I mean, he's twenty three. Like he gonna poke some holes. <laughs> it's what he's gonna do. Uh-huh. But I, I genuinely feel like that woman has so many women heart. Yeah that I respect how she going through it in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, she, um, that's what's needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about Carly Russell? 
So she's the girl who... Girl child. <laughs> who faked her own kidnapping. And they, she hasn't spoken about it yet, but the streets are saying, they're alleging that it's because, you know, she did it to get her boyfriend's attention. Do you know how many in this music industry that they like, they fake their whole life? Yeah. Child, this motherfucker they ran off in the woods. <laughs> I have those moments. Mm -hmm. I would like to run off in the woods, too. Mm -hmm. Um, She wrong for that, but I know just like that. Mm -hmm. I know the y'all jamming to them is just like that they just not you know they running off on some other shit. so carly i don't know but i would like for me and jesse collins to produce your story because there had <laughs> to be something going on with you it had to be right there had to be something going on with her to run out there like that right what about christian rock oh i love her yeah me too i do love her i you i love the I love, it's just her. I don't think anything is a game. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give her? Girl, if you don't get your baby and raise that baby and get the hell on. Okay. Get the hell on. It's, gonna, it's so many blue faces in the world, child. Get the hell on. Right. And get the money. Okay. That yeah. part. She'll be okay. She'll she, be, she will be okay. I don't think she, she knows that yet, though. I think it's getting that a baby will change everything. Yeah. My son changed everything. Mm. He changed everything, but it's still a lot of growth. Needed. Yeah. So I do want to ask because, you know, recently you responded to a fan uh -huh. um, who was like, D uh, what did they say? D did, you know, th they asked if you ever received an apology from Rashida. Uh -huh. And you were like, F her. So, like, are you guys cordial, cool? Hell no. Yeah. That's forever. Like, what do you expect from a bitch to open a bistro? <laughs> what the <laughs> like, I'm done. no. If a woman sit in your face, yeah, and play with you about your abuse, and tell you mm -hmm. what you did not go through, and go through a city to block you from getting your hair done or doing anything um, over. A and then get on, then don't you know, sit on panels of woman empowerment, mm -hmm. and do this bullshit, and sit up there and always is attacking a woman. Like no, bro. Like I don't care how many times Jesus comes sit and visit me. I'm gonna, I will grow, but that is some fucked up. Shit. Mm -hmm. And you still that person. Mm -hmm. No, and I, you know, I'll never say nothing about it. But stop asking me about this behavior. No, mm -hmm. that's up forever. Yeah. That's up forever. What about Angela Yee? Where, where do you guys stand? Girl, I don't give a fuck about no Angela Yee. <laughs> <laughs> Who the f do? <laughs> y'all the media. Y'all be trying to let that girl <laughs> win. Y'all know that is boring as f You know, maybe you should, you should, um, you know, they're doing like co-hosts on Breakfast Club. I will would take it with? over. You should go, you know. They don't need me up there. You should go one, I am banned. one day. <laughs> I am banned You're from. Banned? They look. I'm banned from the Breakfast Club and the Sony building. Me, DMX, and Michael Jackson. I'm in great comforts. Okay. Wait. I go. Okay. They banned you because of you and. Oh, because I was outside for her. Oh, you were outside for her? I was outside for her because I don't play them games. You're not finna be drinking my bottles. I don't respect it. So not. you want to talk to me? We're going to talk. You want to talk? We're going to talk. Would you be open to talking? That you want to talk? We're going to talk. You ain't going to be talking to higher ups and media trying to block folk because you a punk. I did not know you were banned. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, girl, I got my own eggs and sausage and biscuit for the breakfast club. I did not know. They said nothing in the hills. I've been down here peaceful. Yeah, like, I said what I said to you. I never acted in no type of way with you. Did that. It's the truth. I never played with y'all. Mm -hmm. It was always the truth. So, who the f Like, that's not Wendy Williams. I love Wendy Williams. I love her, too. That ain't none of that. Like, yeah. girl, ain't nobody around here. When I grow up, I want to be Angelique. Who the f you know says? like that. I don't want to talk. We're going to talk, but it ain't on no 
clean up nothing. I'm going to stand in my sh- mm. I heard that. I respect it. Totally. You are very, you know, your feelings are valid. 100%. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> your feelings are valid. <laughs> yeah. We, you need to do the breakfast food. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, let's, you know, let's do, let's end this with, like, a fun, quick, rapid fire. Okay. Okay, okay. okay so let's see. I'm just going to ask you some questions. Um, you know, we can be quick, 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 pop, pop, pop. Okay. okay. What's the best compliment you've ever received? Oh, you pretty in real life. That's <laughs> kind of backhanded. No, they be like, oh, you really, like, because in real life, every day, other than this, I don't wear no makeup. Yeah. I don't do nothing. Of that. And to be fair, there's a lot of people who on the internet they look, mm-hmm. you know, they look and then different. When, and then when you see them in real life, it's like oh, they look different. Yeah. I'm, I can't. I am king. Yeah. I do it. I am. Yeah, you look the same. Yeah, I am cute in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your non-negotiable? Something you won't compromise on? My truth. Okay. I'm Super. never gonna gonna stray, even if it's not a popular opinion. Mm-hmm. Even if everybody go against me, I'm still gonna stand on what I feel. Amen. Um, what's your hidden talent? I think my hidden talent, I'm an animal whisperer. Okay, like Dr. Doolittle? I'm really great with animals. Like, my friend over there, she always say I, I can talk to animals. Like, they like me. Okay. I think I'm the first one on that alien ship. When they m- <laughs> rock, they like me. The aliens gonna love you? They'll love me. Yeah, I could see that. Um, if police arrested you with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? Carver got drunk in a bar. <laughs> okay. Carver got drunk and acted up in a bar somewhere yeah. in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is the weirdest thing you've ever asked your assistant to get for you? Uh, a giraffe. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> That's what I'm right now. I'm in the process of getting a giraffe. Oh, so you want a giraffe, like, in your backyard? Yeah, I don't want to help the giraffe. I don't want to, like, cage the giraffe. I want to be able to, like, rewild the giraffe and help the giraffes. Have you ever been to Africa? No. You need to go to Africa and go on a safari. I would, but when I say, like, love it, like, yeah. I'll be watching all the rewilding things. Like, mm-hmm. that's really a thing for me. I feel like you would really enjoy that. I think I could really rewild. Yeah. You, you, you need to put that on your to-do list. So they have a baby giraffe. Okay. It's like you have to, like, see what's going on with it. It's a whole process. Yeah. It's going on now. You can go to Kenya. You can go to South Africa. You can go to Zimbabwe. I don't, like, like, you know how people, like, get money and they travel and do things? Uh-huh. I don't leave the South. Yeah, you gotta, gotta go. I, that's, ain't that bad? That, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you know, people like, I'm going out of town. I'm going on a vacation. Yeah. I do not leave. My vacation is like Gatlinburg. No, you got to go on a vacation. Go I on a safari. Like I think you would actually really enjoy a safari. I think I would. Yeah. Um. So what do you need more of in your life? <laughs> I need... More animals. Animals? Yeah. Okay. What do you need less of? Oh, humans. <laughs> okay. This is my second to last question. Can you sing this nursery rhyme in country? <laughs> what is it? Twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are Up above the world so high Like a diamond in the sky Twinkle, twinkle, little star How I Thank you, Yoli. <laughs> that was so good. Okay, lastly, 
Katie, what okay. are you most proud of about yourself? That I ain't dead. <laughs> okay. I feel like a lot of people from where I'm from in my city, we've lost so many people. Like, you know, like like my sister said, like Boo, we've lost, we like, we lost Gangsta Boo, we lost Clay mm -hmm. from Grand Hustle. It's like so many people we lost, mm -hmm. and it's that we just let, you know, people pass, and then we forget it. Yeah. Um, I feel like the way I have lived so reckless, mm -hmm. there's no reason that I should be here unless God has spared me. Mm. There's no reason I have, yeah. I don't, I just started back driving. I had four wrecks in LA in one day. Then wow. I stopped driving completely. I'm just driving for the first time in over four years. Wow. Well, good like, for you. Yeah, I feel like I'm most proud that I have, um, that I'm living and I still can, I still can like find a reason. Yeah, I love that. Okay, well, tell people what are you working on? What you got going on? Plug, plug your stuff. Tell. And I got people. a restaurant. Yes. You know, I do these restaurants. Um, I got a restaurant coming in a couple weeks. Another one. Um, I have my country album. I have my R and B album that's about to come out in September. Finally, after four <laughs> years. Um, I have that. It's really great. Um, then two months later, I go right into country. I have the remake Yay. of my number one selling album, Anybody Want to Buy Heart. I have the remake of that. Um, I have all my farm stuff. Well, thank you so much for stepping into the shade room. This was amazing. I enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you. You were very comforting. Thank Aww, you. I love that. Well, thanks, Kay Michelle. Stepping <laughs> into the shade room. Are you going to come ride horses and stuff with yes. me? Yes. Are you going to do it? I will. I'll come ride horses and we can yodel and we can eat food. <laughs> You're going to learn about this yodeling. I want to. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I. Okay. Yes. Yodeling he who? Yodeling he who? You were serious, right? <laughs> Thank I got you. you. I got you. I got you, really. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. Roommates, K. Michelle, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, roommates. If you want to see more celebs stepping into the shade room, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here.